Hey guys, Snoozy here. Um, today, instead of a build guide, I'm going to go over energy shield mechanics, why I prefer it, and stuff like that. I think there's a big fundamental misunderstanding about how energy shield works in the community, um, and I've been getting a lot of questions on it in some of my other videos as well. Um, so I was hoping to clear it up here in this, and then link back to it maybe in future guide videos that way I can go in more depth here. And then and once you guys understand how it works, you don't have to skip ahead and try to find where I finished talking about energy shield so you're not hearing it every build guide. So energy shield is a sorceress ability that's going to be in the lightning tree here. And you can see it right here. It creates a magical shield that consumes mana instead of health when you take damage. Um, since sorceresses can be pretty squishy, this is super helpful for them. Uh, the biggest part of this here is when you level up, you're actually gaining two mana uh, and only one life. So from leveling, you're going to get more mana than you will health. And on top of that, too, since there are items such as, you know, your Stone of Jordans, Frostburns, Arachnids, stuff like that, that just give straight up multipliers on top of it. Um, while there are stuff like the Jarun for life, they're not near as a big of a multiplier. Um, on top of that, you're going to notice that Energy Shield Sorceresses also have higher mana regen, which is one of the primary reasons I enjoy playing them. Um, when I apply my Energy Shield builds and they're up and running fully, I generally don't have to worry about running any kind of potions except for Juvies, just for emergencies. And if I'm trying to get sweaty, I'll maybe use some Antidote potions like I have down here. But... For me, the energy shield lets me be a lot lazier, and I also get really tanky. Um, the other big benefit here that a lot of people don't understand about energy shield is it doesn't care about your resistances. So if you notice, this is my live sorceress right now that I'm playing. It's a Frost Nova build energy shield. Um, if you notice, my cold resistance is actually negative 25, and that's generally not that big of a deal for me because my energy shield is taking 85% of the damage anyways. Um, this will go up as I level up. Um, I've actually switched a little bit away from the energy shield into more damage, um, so I could technically get this higher. Um, but 85% for this build seems pretty comfortable so far. But since energy shield doesn't care about resistances, that means I don't have to necessarily worry about getting 75 in every resistance. The only resistance that actually matters mostly is going to be your poison resistance because poison will always go through energy shield it's the most annoying thing about energy shield because poison damage can last for a very long time and since our health pool is relatively low as you see on this build i only have 526 health before battle orders um it can go down pretty quick so the mechanics of the energy shield here are instead of taking damage straight to your life, you're going to take that damage to your mana instead. So if I get hit for 100 damage, 85 of that damage is going to get hit into my mana pool, which is, you know, the 1,772. 15% of that damage will go to 526. Now, let's say I got hit with a 100 cold damage, okay? 85 damage is going to go to my mana. Then the remaining 15% that I would take over to my health is actually going to be more than 15% because my cold resistance is negative 25. So I'll take a quarter more damage over here. So this lets you get away, especially early ladder, with not having to worry about your resistances as much. You just have to be incredibly careful that you have enough health to survive one shots and stuff like that. Especially with cold. Cold can be kind of uh, scary because of cold enchanted. You know, if you get a group of three of them and they all pop at the same time, that can do a lot of damage to you. Now, if you're going energy shield, I highly recommend maxing its synergy telekinesis first. You don't care about the lightning damage or anything like that. What you care about is getting 20 hard points in the telekinesis. And what I mean by hard points is actual skill points. So if you see, my telekinesis is level 36 right now. That does not matter at all to me. Literally don't care. All that matters is that there's 20 hard points in there. Because after 20 hard points, it will cap out the synergy here. And as you can see, it's minus 6% mana consumed per level. So if you look at it, mana consumed per damage is at 75%. That's the lowest it will go, and that's because there's 20 actual skill points in there. Your bonus skills for telekinesis will not matter for this. 
your bonus skills for energy shield do matter. So I highly recommend maxing telekinesis first, because if you don't, and let's say you only put one hard point in the telekinesis, and then you max energy shield, and let's say you have 85% of the damage taken as into your energy shield here, and you get hit with 100 damage, uh, energy shield starts out with a 2 to 1 ratio. So if you're taking 85 damage normally, um, that's actually going to double into the amount that you're going to take. So you're going to take 170 damage into your mana, which is kind of counterintuitive, really. You want to get that as low as possible. So I recommend maxing telekinesis first to get to that 0.75 to 1 ratio. Um, that's going to make your mana go by a lot faster. Um, on top of that, the most important thing here really is that you don't have to worry about your resistances as much. And that the items like Stone of Jordan, while expensive, give you that 25% increased uh, maximum mana. Um, however, frost burns are pretty common and pretty easy to get, especially at the beginning of the ladder. So what you can do is if you're having mana problems early in the ladder, where are your frost burns? And if you look, that's an increased maximum mana of 40%. That doesn't change. That's always there. Um, and two soldiers is going to be the 50%, so you're losing only 10% of your maximum mana that you would have if you had the two soldiers, which are expensive. Um, since you're going to get rid of your gloves, which for me are the trangs, usually they're going to be like mage fists, you can make this up by, you know, faster cast rate ring. Put two faster cast rate rings on, you're still going to hit your break points, you'll get whatever other bonuses, and then you're still going to get that 40% maximum mana. So these are a really good alternative, especially early game if you can't afford the Soges, as long as you can get the faster cast rate rings. Other things that are really nice is Arachnids are pretty much used in almost every Sorceress build, or, you know, at least an option, and they do have that little 5% maximum mana. Uh, Silk Weaves also will give you an increased maximum mana of 10%, and then the mana after each kill, which is really nice as well. Um... So energy shield will make you really beefy. You don't have to worry about the resistances near as much. On top of that, you're going to have a really, really high mana regen, especially if you're using a mercenary with a meditation armor that increases your mana regen. So with the builds that I usually try to run and a lot of my energy shield guides, stuff like that, if you go ahead and take a look, I can sit here and spam Frost Nova. And my mana goes down slightly, but not very much. Um, let's get a battle orders on. So now with battle orders, it goes down even less. On top of that, I'm taking 85% of the damage into this 2,600 energy shield or mana pool. I still have 849 life. I'm still spamming. I'm not losing any of my mana. I can teleport forever. I can spam this forever, and it's really nice. On top of that, what's really nice. Is since my life is so low, I have a plus six battle orders on this character, and it's still pretty low uh, life here, as you can see at 849. But what's nice about that is my mercenary is actually a prayer mercenary, which is healing heals 27 at his current level, uh, so it's a level 21 prayer. Um, realistically, I don't have to worry about my health because my health is so low that prayer will keep me topped off when I take damage. So if I'm not worrying about my health and I'm not worrying about my mana, I really only have to worry about when I take big spike damage. And that's really what the Jeeves are for. And since you can teleport all day and never run out of mana, um, you're really not going to need mana potions either. So it really helps. You'll find once you get geared, you use very few Jeeves or anything like that because your mana and health are just positive almost all the time in regen. The big downside, like I said, is poison. There are some poisons you can deal with where you can kind of just stay alive, maybe use a juve every 30 seconds. There's other ones that'll just shred your health immediately and you're going to have to get out of there or use an antidote potion. There are drawbacks to energy shield builds. Um, I know a couple of you guys have pointed this out. And realistically, I feel like a lot of this just comes down to your playstyle preferences. I prefer the energy shield because it lets me be a lot lazier. However, since I am maxing you know, two skills, telekinesis, and then this one's not quite maxed. It needs six more points in it to get maxed um, for this current build. But that's going to be, what, let's say 36-ish, 34-ish points that I could, you know, instead of putting in there, I could put it in a blizzard or the blizzard synergies or, you know, anything like that. Um, 
I could even, you know, put more points into cold mastery and really get that to the cap of uh, negative 195. You know, you're going to have more damage as a vitality build. Um, so a lot of these builds that you see as energy shield, you can change them into vitality pretty easily by not putting the points in here, putting them into vitality, not maxing telekinesis and energy shield and putting them in some other cool damage or whatever you want. Maybe you want to go into Hydra for have dual trees or whatever you want to do there. Um, it's a big preference. I really recommend that you try the builds both ways um, and kind of see which one you prefer. Um, I find when I go the Vitality builds, um, I run into more mana issues or having issues with keeping my life topped off. I think Energy Shield is a lot more relaxing for me personally. Uh, that's generally why I end up playing it. But again, it's not for everybody. Um, if you are going an Energy Shield build, I would recommend having at least 500 health before battle orders, especially if you're not doing your resistances very well, like mine. If this is negative 100 or something like that, something really bad, um, even 20, negative 25 is bad, but if you're like negative 100 and you hit two or three cold enchant around you that pop all at once, you're probably going to die. I mean, you don't have very much health. Your resistances are bad, which means it's getting another multiplier onto your health. Um, so you're going to make sure you have enough to at least not die. Uh, the battle orders really helps with this, but the minimum is, I would say, at least 500. What that means is maybe you have to put more hard points into vitality. Or, you know, once you're filthy rich, like uh, if you looked at the Energy Shield Nova Guide, um, a lot of these were, you know, 45 life on these cold skillers. And if you're using a lot of life charms and stuff to keep you alive, instead of like the magic charms and stuff I'm using down here... Um, your health's going to be higher, which means you won't need as many points into Vitality. This is going to be what you're comfortable with. There's really no best way, in my opinion. It comes down to your comfort level. For me, minimum 500 life before battle orders to be really comfortable. Um, after that, it just it's pretty much dump everything into Energy Shield as long as you can wear your gear. Um, so hopefully that kind of clears up the Energy Shield questions. Um hopefully this comes out pretty well and this helps you guys and i can point to this in the future rather than having you guys listen through how energy shield works in every single guide hopefully you guys learned something as always if you have questions or concerns anything like that reach out on the comments or on my website i really do try to read them all and get back to all of them um, the replies are a little bit harder because i don't always get notifications to a reply of my comment but comments i usually do see and i try really hard on comments or replies so Please let me know if you have any questions and I'll do my best to help you out. Um, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.